Hello, I'm Christy and I have been living stationary in this 30 foot travel trailer for a little bit over a year. If you're on the fence about going full time in your RV or you're not sure how to find a place and where to get started with stationary RV living, this video is for you. I'm gonna share some tips with you and things to consider to help you make the right decision. My first tip is to just do it. Don't let the naysayers stop you. It's easy to feel not so confident about a decision that is different and that maybe not everybody is doing or not everybody understands. But the reality is it could be really right for you. I know when I made this choice, there were people in my life that were like, huh, why are you doing that? They were worried, but they didn't know what I had in my heart and what I was thinking about my financial independence and living more sustainably. So just because other people don't understand doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. There's times when I've also felt self-conscious about telling friends or coworkers that I live in an RV, but really the more comfortable I've become with this decision and the more I enjoy living stationary and full-time in my RV, the easier it is and the more excited I am actually to tell people, hey, I live full-time in an RV and it's pretty great. Or, oh, I gotta take off of work early because my water tank exploded and is flooding my RV. So the more comfortable you become and the more confident you are in your decision, the less of an issue it's gonna be. So don't let your own fear stop you and don't let certainly don't let other people's fear stop you. So I live full-time in this 30-foot travel trailer with my partner, Andre, and he particularly likes this next tip I'm going to share with you. Consider the weather. That's gonna be really important for the type of RV you decide to get, if it's even practical for you to live in an RV in that particular area, and the different things you're gonna to have to deal with seasonally. We live in Northern California. It's a beautiful area. We used to live in Oakland in the San Francisco Bay Area where because of the the effect of the bay the temperature was much more consistent it still gets cold in the winter you know warm in the summer but there's less of a variation now we live further north and we're really close to the coast so in the winter it actually got down to there was a few times when it got down to below 30 degrees which you know we can manage for a few nights you know a, a few weeks even but if it had been much colder, much longer, I think it would have been really hard living in the RV and those freezing, below freezing temperatures. It seems like people do it, but there's just issues involved that I don't personally want to have to deal with. Uh, one of those is, you know, freezing pipes, freezing water lines, busting water tanks, um, and other issues that come up from the cold. Certainly also heating. You know, we really try to minimize our, our heating and our energy use in the winter. So if it had been much colder, we would really would have struggled, I think, and we would have used a lot of propane for heating. Also, we're under some beautiful trees, which <laughs> creates some issues sometimes with branches and, and like stuff falling onto our roof. But it's really great in the summertime because it can be nice and warm and sunny outside. But because we're under the trees, we stay so much cooler. So in the summer, we actually barely even use our air conditioning. I think we used it like once or twice last year. And we found that just using a box fan to create ventilation was plenty good for us. Whereas some of our neighbors who are more sun exposed, they have to keep their air conditioning cranking and cranking to keep it cool in there. So those are all things to consider. What's the weather like? What temperatures are you gonna have to deal with? Are you gonna have branches falling on you? Is it gonna be raining a lot? These are all things to consider because your RV is so much more exposed to the elements than a traditional apartment or home. Another thing to consider is access and your transportation needs. It seems pretty common, at least around here, that the places where you can find an RV park are farther out from the city centers. So that means transportation into the city centers is gonna look a little different than if you were living right inside the city. So depending on where you work and how you live, you might need great road access, you might need great public transportation, you might want good walking and biking paths. And that's definitely something to consider because if you have to drive hours to get to where you need to go, is it gonna be practical for you or even economical for you to live in an RV and have to drive and drive and drive? We're in a pretty good area. I like the roads around here. We do have a bus system that I have taken quite a few times and we also have some bike paths. So if living in an RV is going to be a smart choice for you, you have to be honest with yourself about your transportation needs, 
what you can afford, if, if it's gonna add extra time to your commute to work or if it's gonna be something manageable. Moving on, what utilities and amenities do you need in your RV parking site? Sometimes you can find a situation where you just park on someone's property or some like undeveloped land. Personally, I don't think that would work for me because I would have such a hard time not having access to a sewer and some of the other basic amenities that might not be available to you on like an undeveloped site. When it comes to RV parks, everyone's gonna be a little bit different. Some have like pools and laundry facilities and playgrounds and like all the bells and whistles. The RV park that we're at has the basics and that works for us. We have access to um, water and trash. Those are all paid for as, as part of our rent. Uh, we also have um, a sewer, well actually not sewer, it's a septic. We have a septic system that we use, so access to that is great. It's so easy to clean our tanks. I clean them once a week, I just do it every weekend. We also have a Wi-Fi here, but it's not very good. So we set up our own Wi-Fi, so we pay for that separately. And what else do we have? Oh, we have um, showers and a bathroom separate, which has been really helpful while if you saw my last video, you'll know our water tank, our water heater exploded. So we haven't replaced our water heater yet. And we've been using the, um, the showers that are offered by the, the RV park. What we don't have that would be nice is a separate laundry facility. But fortunately, the laundromat near us, it's just right down the street. It's less than a five minute drive. So we go over there once a week and we do all of our laundry and bring it home. I'm trying to think of other amenities that RV parks have, but you all can list in the comments below what are some RV park amenities and, and utilities that are nice to have access to. Oh yeah, well, electricity, obviously, duh. You gotta have electricity in this country. So we have electricity as well in our RV park. We just pay for that separately in addition to our rent. So if you know you need to have laundry on site and that's a deal breaker for you, that's something to look for. If you know, like me, that you would lose your mind having to go once a week to a dump station and dump out your tanks, then you know you have to have access to a septic system or a sewer. Those are things that you should definitely keep in mind because that'll help you narrow down your search of where you can live stationary and full-time in your RV and also where not to bother because it would just be too much of a headache. I guess another thing to think about in this area is spacing, right? Because some RV parks are really tight and are really close and you can like see into your neighbor's life and others have more space or have dividers. So that's kind of a, an amenity too, the amenity of space. My next tip, and this is more for people who haven't purchased an RV yet and are just thinking about RV living, won't apply to everyone, but for optimum flexibility, I recommend buying a newer RV. When we first decided to do RV living, we actually made a big mistake, a big mistake. Don't worry, if you're nervous about making mistakes, don't worry, I already made a big mistake and I survived. So let me show you what happened. I got so excited, Andre and I were so excited about RV living, we were ready to go. RVs were flying off the shelves because it was in the middle of a pandemic. So we made the wrong decision. We bought the wrong RV. It was the wrong style, it was a Class C, and it was the wrong year and just quality. It was too old for us. It was a really old RV. We thought, this is great. We'll do renovations. It'll be fun. <clears throat> but it was just way more than we could handle. But more importantly, we couldn't find a place to park it. A lot of RV parks, there's stigma against older RVs. And I can understand why. They have more problems. You don't want to have tanks leaking out everywhere. You don't want to have tarps over roofs looking junky. So a lot of RV parks will have like an age minimum or maximum, age maximum, <laughs> where you need to have basically something like a 2010 or newer. So we'd bought like a 1985 old Coachman Class C RV that was just way more than we needed. So we ended up selling it, it was fine. We sold it, we learned our lesson, it was a great learning opportunity. And then we took a lot longer to find the right trailer for us. We bought a truck, we got a good deal on a truck, and we bought our 30 foot tow behind travel trailer and we couldn't be happier with the decision that we made even with our water tank ish issue i keep talking about our water tank it's on my mind guys i've been taking cold showers still even with our water tank issues and other you know challenges that have come up we feel great about the travel trailer that we bought it absolutely fits our needs and um it's a lot newer we ended up buying a 2017 this is a 2017 
Forest River Salem. I love the layout. It's exactly what, what we needed and we had no problem at all finding parking. Actually, the first place that we, we really wanted to stay in this RV park where, we, where we're living, and it was the first place we applied to and we had no issues. Whereas when it, we had our old 1985 RV, I couldn't find anywhere to park it. It was so difficult. So of course, if you're living on your friend's land or you own property somewhere, or you're in a place that is uh, welcoming to vintage travel trailers, then this doesn't apply to you. But if you haven't bought an RV yet and you're thinking about doing this lifestyle, um, then really consider what age, what year you should be buying. And I highly recommend buying something newer if you can afford it and if it makes sense for your needs. So once you have your RV and you're all set up in your RV park, an important thing to plan for is a maintenance schedule. When I talked to Andre about making this video, he said, yes, I second that tip. So this is a really important tip. Have a maintenance schedule. Instead of being reactive to maintenance issues, which will inevitably happen, there's always things that you could miss or things that will just happen. Um, but instead of being so reactive, give yourself the opportunity of looking on your calendar, finding days when you're available, and just planning out what RV checks and maintenance you're gonna do. Something I have, have done that I highly recommend is just going, well, f at least for us, we have to go and sweep our roof because we're under the trees. If you're not under trees, it might not be so important, but um, taking the time to at least inspect your roof. Inspect your roof with you know whatever frequency makes sense to you based on the area where you're living. Because we're under trees, I want to go up once a month, at least once a month, to sweep the roof, make sure there's no like cracks in the seals and no weird things happening up there. So that's something that check I need to regularly make sure I'm doing. Other things to check on are your tanks, your seals on the outside and the exterior. Um, uh, what else? The, the water filters. We have a water filtration system and we just change that out every six months, we change our, our water filters. Having a built-in schedule and knowing what you need to do when based on um, how frequently problems arise, based on the season, and um, just based on the, 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 the shelf life of certain things. Our water filters, we decided, are probably good for about six months, so we change them out every six months. Our roof gets dirty with branches about once a month, so we're gonna sweep it off at least once a month. And our seals put up with a lot. Our roof and our seals put up with a lot throughout the winter because it's raining and it's cold and there's branches falling. So we wanna make sure all summer long we're gonna do roof projects. Like I'm gonna repaint the, I'm gonna reseal the roof, re around all the different seals. So we have like a list of, of things to go down. And it's helpful if you can actually put on your calendar and plan out this day of the month is my RV maintenance day and this is what I'm gonna do. It'll also help you avoid, like I said, being reactive and having to, for example, take days off of work to fix a hole or a leak in your roof or a busted water heater. These are all things, these are all problems that I've had, by the way. <laughs> I've learned to do these things because I've made these mistakes. Don't be reactive, plan your maintenance, and it'll go so much smoother. You'll also be really proud of yourself. Pat on the back. My last tip, and this should be no surprise to those of you who've been watching this channel for a while, my last tip is to plan your grocery shopping. You have limited space in your RV, and that includes the refrigerator, so it makes all the more sense to be intentional about the food you eat and what you're gonna cook and with the frequency with which you're gonna go shopping and what you're going to buy. I found that we go to the store, I mean, a couple times a week. I'll do like one or two larger grocery hauls throughout the week, and we do live very close to a grocery store, so we'll often you know, pop over there for little things we might have forgotten or little snacks that we wanna get. But realistically, the space, the space in the kitchen and the space in the refrigerator, although it's much smaller than a traditional apartment or home in the United States, it's really sufficient. And part of the way you can manage that is by coming up with that shopping list and just buying what you need and planning out what you need and not, you know, getting like 50 steaks and packing them, <laughs> trying to pack them in your refrigerator all at once. So those are my tips for considering and planning if stationary RV life is gonna be right for you. 
Uh, please let me know what you thought of this video. And if you have any tips yourself, please share them below. There's always a wealth of knowledge out here on YouTube. So I love hearing what you all have to say and all the ideas and tips that you have to share. That's it for today. Happy RV living.